Welcome to this tutorial video that focuses on the configurability of MIDIRIST Unleashed. MIDIRIST Unleashed shows a number of buttons here that leads to panels and each panel and all the controls on the panel can be freely configured. Let's take a look at the knobs. I have this first knob here. Let's say that I want to change what it does. I tap on the triple dots in the top right corner and then use the edit button to move into edit mode. All the controls now appear with dashed lines. I can select one and you can see all the configurable options for that control. This knob is now configured to send out CC messages, control change messages. And I can select the MIDI channel, the CC number, the minimum and maximum values. You can even learn MIDI messages as the device that you're connected to sends MIDI messages back to the, phone, uh, to the watch. It then will learn what those MIDI messages are and you can change the color. Let's change the color and call this knob one and say it is on channel two, CC number 80 and change the minimum value to, I don't know, 16 and the maximum value to 100. Now, if I go back to the panel and the performance page, you can see that it says knob one. And as I turn it, the green dial appears and it can only go from 16 to 100. Let's now configure another knob, this one. And I want to make it a button. Let's rename it and say that this is button. Let's not type it out completely, but one. And when it's a button, you can actually make it momentary. Let's change the color here, make it purple, and then go back and show you this. Momentary means that as long as your finger is pressed down, it will send the maximum value. And when, when you release it, it will send the minimum value. You also have the option to send out notes, with specific note numbers and different velocity values for the on and off note messages. Other supported messages are channel pressure and program change. When it's a button, the program change will send out a specific program number. When it's a knob, program change goes between a minimum and a maximum. So as you can see, you can have any configuration of controls here on the same panel. And you have these corner controls that can optionally be hidden. These are alternative buttons that you can use to extend the functionalities that are on one panel. If you go to the layout of a panel, you can see whether or not you want these, bo these bottom left and bottom right controls. Let's turn them off and then change the background color. I can also say that I'm only interested in, for instance, three controls and only three of them will appear. Now, if I change the name, let's say knobs, buttons, and go back to the list, you will see that it now appears with that new name. The next two panels are the same. You have the XY panel and it behaves the same way. You can go to layout, for instance, and turn off the bottom controls. Then the XY panel becomes bigger and you can use the edit functionality to change the messages that are being sent out by each of the axes. For the motion panel, we have a number of additional options. So if we go to acceleration, for instance, you can decide whether it is a traditional control or whether it is a trigger. When it's a trigger, you set the threshold that will actually uh, initiate the gesture. So let's take a look at what that means. Here now you will see that there is a gray angle that is filled out and that is a threshold value. So as I turn out the, the motion data and I start accelerating, you see if it's a small acceleration, it is still below the threshold. But then if it's a big acceleration, I can trigger and toggle here the values. And I can set this one also to momentary. If this now becomes momentary, for as long as it exceeds the threshold, it will trigger the value. But if the acceleration is small enough, nothing will happen. For roll, yaw, and pitch, 
you can also decide whether it is bidirectional or not. When it's bidirectional, it means that you can move up and you can move down. If it's unidirectional, you can only move up. And all of these can have minimum and maximum values, labels, colors, and different messages that are being sent out. The stepper is very simple. It basically allows you to have one control, and this can be control change, channel pressure, or program change, with the associated parameters. And then finally, we have transport control. Transport control is dependent on how the panel is set up. Currently, this is set up for MMC, MIDI machine control. MIDI machine control has fewer messages that you can send out, fewer message types. So let's look at the play button. Here, I can only see six different options, meaning that I can rearrange how they are positioned currently on the panel, but I don't have any additional ones. If I now switch this to MCU and then edit, play, you can see that there's a whole number of additional commands that have appeared. There's undo, redo, click, cycle, save and enter. And you can use these in any of the locations. Now, one of the nice things of MIDI Wrist Unleashed is that you can create any number of panels. So let's say you have, you want to add an additional transport uh, panel and give this a number. Let's say this is transport two and then add it. Now, transport two, I could decide that this panel is actually using different controls. Let's say that I'm only using two controls and that I'm going to hide and then I'm going to hide the left and right button buttons. And then each of these, I'll change their nature. So this becomes undo and this here becomes redo. And now you see that I have a transport control but, uh, panel here sending out just these two messages and then another one here sending out these six messages. So this is an overview of the controls of MIDI Wrist Unleashed. I hope this was useful. See you in the next video. Bye.